Fishing with dots and dashes. Morse code coming to a fishing attack near you. Good afternoon, Mike. Uh, again, you have another interesting story besides uh, Jim. It seems like a new fishing tactic using Morse code to deliver the, you know, malicious uh, executables, maybe attachments. Could you elaborate more on that one? I really would like to hear about that. Absolutely. So I'm always fascinated by how these, these types of phishing campaigns evolve, the different tactics that they come up with to try and get around the latest things that we as the defenders have you know, implemented and things like that. And this one's kind of novel uh, in that um, it, we haven't necessarily, uh, researchers haven't seen where anyone else has tried this before, but um, what the particular campaign is doing, it's very, very targeted. So there's not a lot of instances of this going around, but there have been a number of samples, you know, provided to virus total. So it is, you know, kind of making the rounds. But what they did was they um, took their attack code and they encoded it using Morse code. So there's actually, yeah. when you look at, when you look at the attachment the, as a phishing attack, it kind of follows that kind of normal kind of thread and, and, and chain that you would expect, right? You get the email, it has an attachment. In this particular mm -hmm. case, it is actually, they're, they're leveraging double extensions. So it's actually an HTML file, um, but it's made to look like an Excel spreadsheet. And it's got a title about oh. an invoice with your company name, and they've got a logo in there and whatnot. So it's supposed to look like a legitimate Excel spreadsheet, but they've actually double um, put two file extensions on it um, to help hide the fact that it's an HTML file. So when you look at the HTML file in text, what it has is uh, in a text editor, what it contains is a block of text that is encoded in Morse code. So it's all dots and dashes. And then they've got a JavaScript function, which at execution time decodes the Morse code into um, a, a particular um, another intermediate uh, language, which is then ultimately translated uh, into the final attack uh, code and then inserted into other areas inside the HTML document to actually fully execute when it's rendered. And the goal of all of this is to present to you uh, what looks like a legitimate Office 365 hosted uh, Excel spreadsheet that is actually just presenting you with an error message saying that your session is timed out and you need to reauthenticate and asks you to enter your credentials. Point they abscond with your credentials to Office 365, and they can then log in, access your documents, you know, uh, other other um, uh, elements that might be using that same authentication store uh, to to govern access to it. Right. Uh, so this is this is really interesting, uh, and certainly decoding and replacement of character strings is whatnot. You know, definitely a time worn tactic. Right. You want to, you know, obfuscate that something is, you know, uh, a particular format or a particular type of string. You simply replace dynamically certain elements of that, you know, at time of execution, right? We've seen that before. But it was interesting that they actually um, leveraged Morse code in this case. It was somewhat novel um, as, as the researchers identified. And it made me wonder, you know, how long it would take for us to see um, such decoding um, methods start to use like, you know, Klingon or Dothraki or some other <laughs> kind of language, right? <laughs> Next thing you know, we're going to get phishing attacks in Elvish, right? So, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the next best thing, right? So, I thought it was pretty interesting. A lot of malware that will encode its payload in, you know, in hex or in base 64, but yeah, Morse code is a new one. I, you know, ever since you haven't, you know, since like 2006 or whenever they stopped requiring Morse code for ham radio licenses in the U.S., I really haven't paid much attention to Morse code. So, yeah, this is a blast from the past. And also, obviously, it opened more opportunities. I think uh, they have shown, you know, if Morse code can be used, I think others, like you mentioned, Mike, can be leveraged to it. It's, 
it will not be a surprise to see it anytime soon. But I think uh, the goal is to basically pass all these email uh, gateways, right? I think uh, that was the primary goal. I believe uh, with, with, with the usage of Mars code, they achieved that goal. So in this scenario, uh, what could be, what could be, uh, what could be countermeasures? I think the first, the first and foremost, which comes to my mind is user education. Besides that, what, what we should tell the, tell the audience. Well, one of the things to make sure that you've done is that um, you have Windows file extensions enabled, right? So if you're hiding mm -hmm. Windows file extensions, that's really going to play into this particular uh, campaign's, you know, double extension tactic, which is certainly not mm -hmm. unique to this particular phishing campaign. You've seen those types of double extension attacks or, or techniques used uh, by other campaigns. And if you have not enabled file extensions or you're hiding those file extensions in the Windows operating system, you know, your users aren't going to be able to necessarily discern that they're clicking on something that they shouldn't be, right? So from a technical perspective, that is certainly um, one thing that you can make sure that you're doing uh, to help enable uh, your end user education campaigns to be more effective. Oh, thank you. That, that's a really good point, actually. I missed that both extension. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, the other I, thing, as always, make sure you've got multi-factor uh, authentication enabled, particularly on Office 365. I mean, it, it's a good practice everywhere, but, you know, we field multiple incident response calls on a regular basis um, that boil down to the fact that somebody's Office 365 credentials got compromised, and then, you know, it was off to the races at that point. And that definitely mm -hmm. is one of, you know, that initial attack vectors uh, that threat actors are actively looking for. So if you haven't, um, you know, checked the box to make sure that you've got multi-factor authentication required for Office 365, strongly recommended. I don't really understand why hiding the extensions is the default in, in Windows, you know, Windows 10. It's... Every time I get access to, you know, set up a new laptop or a new desktop with Windows, that's the first, one of the first things I do is I turn those on because I always want it, and I turn on the hidden, you know, show the hidden files and folders because I want to know what's on my system. You know, when I've got, you know, when I click on that little folder icon and open up the, you know, the Explorer window there, I want to see. I, I want to see the full mm -hmm. file name. I want to see what folders, of, hidden folders, exist in this folder. I don't want the bad guys to be able to slip that by me. <laughs> so I, I it, it drives me nuts that that's not the default. But I suppose somebody somewhere figured that it was it improved the user experience to not have that or something. But I, yeah, it drives me nuts. I mean, no. If not Microsoft, if it maybe it should be the responsibility should be on the individual organizations, right? That SA team should make sure, as part of their um, golden images, maybe there should not be any hidden file extension. Yeah, that there. Yeah, if, it, if I were running the world, that would, the the default would be the <laughs> yeah, hidden files and folders would be displayed, and file extensions would always be displayed. So, yeah, when you, when you make me emperor, I will decree <laughs> that that is, that is the way things will be. Very good point, Tim.